Hello gentlemen, we've been talking about Lewis structure and how to draw them. And we've seen that once we learn how to draw Lewis structures, sometimes we'll come across a substance that has multiple Lewis structures that can be drawn for that particular substance. Our example was NCS1 minus. There are three different Lewis structures that can be drawn for this particular substance. So we have to determine which one is the most dominant, which one is not correct, but the most dominant. So we determine this by determining something called the formal charge. The formal charge is the charge the atom would have if all the atoms in the molecule had the same electronegativity values. This means that all the bonding electrons are being shared equally in that atom. We assign formal charges to each individual atom using this general format. The formal charge is equal to the number of valence electrons minus the number of bonding, not sorry, non-bonding electrons, which are the dots, minus half of your bonding electrons, which are your lines. Once we've assigned formal charges, then we can decide which one is dominant. Let's see how we do that. So which one is dominant? The Lewis structure that has formal charge total that is closest to zero. That one, or formal charges that are closest to zero, I'll say it that way, that one would be more dominant. If that one doesn't give you a clear picture of which one's more dominant, you go to the second criteria. When negative charge resides on the more electronegative atom, the Lewis structure is generally more dominant than the one that has negative charge on the less electronegative atom. Let's assign formal charges for all these structures here and see how it's done. Again, our equation is our number of valence electrons minus the dots minus the lines there. So for this particular one, for each atom we assign a formal charge. Here we have nitrogen. Number of valence electrons is five. So five minus the number of dots is two. Minus the number of lines, which are three, gives us 5 minus 2, which is 3, minus 3 lines, which is 0, and has a formal charge of 0. Carbon has 4 valence electrons minus the number of dots, or non-bonding electrons, 0. We don't have any. So it's 4 minus 0, which is 4, and minus the number of lines, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 lines touching carbon, so that is 4 minus 4, also giving 0. Sulfur. Six valence electrons minus number of dots. We have two, four, six dots. Six minus six is zero. Minus the line here is negative one. So a lot of zeros. That's good. That's close to being dominant. Now the sum of all your formal charges, zero plus zero plus negative one, should equal the overall charge of the substance, the ion here that we started with. So that's one way to check your answer. Now the next one, nitrogen, has five valence electrons. We have one, two, three, four dots, so five minus four is one, minus one, two. So one minus two gives us minus one charge. Carbon has four valence electrons, minus four dots. Well, we don't have, sorry, minus the number of dots. We don't have any dots, so that's 4 minus 0, which is 4. And we have minus our number of lines there, which is 0. Sulfur. We have 6 valence electrons. 1, 2, 3, 4 dots. Four, 6 minus 4 is 2. 2 minus your 2 lines here gives you a formal charge of 0 for sulfur. And we have 0, 0, 1. These add up to equal negative 1. For this one, nitrogen here has 5 valence electrons. 5 minus the 6 non-bonding is negative 1, minus another one is negative 2. Copper, 4 valence electrons. We don't have any bonding or non-bonding electrons, but we do have 1, 2, 3, 4 bonds, so 4 minus 4 is 0. Sulfur, 6 valence electrons. We have 2 dots here. 6 minus 2 is 4. 4 minus your 3 here gives you 1. And we verify negative 2 
plus zero plus one gives you negative one, which is the overall charge. So all these are correct. Now to determine which one is the most dominant Lewis structure, we need to look at these rules. Formal charge is closest to zero. So we look at these, we have two zeros here, two zeros there, that's good. Over here we have negative two, zero, and one. This isn't close to zero at all. This is negative two, that's one. Those are further away from zero. These would be more towards dominance or the more dominant Lewis structures. Now which one of these is the most dominant? We look at the second rule here. When negative charge resides on the more electronegative atom, the Lewis structure is generally more dominant. Of these three, the most electronegative atom is nitrogen. We look at the periodic table to decide this. So the negative charge here resides on the most electronegative atom, thus this is the most dominant Lewis structure. That's how we would decide which one is the most dominant, which one um, to draw. But we would draw all three and then use this formal charge method to decide that. Now, what happens when we draw a Lewis structure of a substance, let's say like ozone, which is O3, and we get this makeup. But we could just as easily draw it in this way. It can be drawn that way just, just as easily. Now, which one is more dominant? If you did your formal charge determining method, you would get the same results for both. When that happens, that means that both structures are equally valid representations of the molecule ozone. When we see that placement of the atoms is the same, but placement of the electrons are different. When that happens, these Lewis structures are called resonance structures. The actual arrangement of electrons for ozone is a blend of these two different Lewis structures. It's not one or the other, it's a blend of the two. And we can talk about that more if we get into hybridization and talk about how these orbitals are really overlapping because really they're not lines between atoms. They are orbitals overlapping with electrons in them. So gentlemen, please take notes. We'll talk about this next time. Adios.